Hello again, Bears fans. And sorry, so, so sorry that we have to do this. This harsh realities three and out here on We Are Regal Radio. And uh, our three and out series, of course, as you all know, is our three takeaways from every single Bears game. And uh, unfortunately, we do have to do it to the latest Bears loss. Only two so far this season, so can't be, I guess, too negative. But the Bears lose to the Los Angeles Rams 24 to 10 on Monday Night Football. And offensively, complete disaster embarrassment that, uh, unfortunately, if you're a Bears fan that has had a longevity and at least been uh, watching the team since, what, uh, the 2000s, maybe the uh, 90s, but complete futility offensively has been a theme. And let's, uh, I guess, just go ahead and jump right into it. But uh, before we to go to our first takeaway, uh, like I said, this is a, kind of a harsh reality type game. And even though harsh realities have a negative connotation, it doesn't always necessarily mean that so even though this this might sound like a negative podcast that's not specifically what it's going to be i'm sure we're going to cover some negativity uh the point is we want to be clear with context with what the heck is going on with this bears team moving forward not just not just kind of looking at optimism especially if it's not very logical or within the realms of realism because we don't want to just go overboard hoping for things that probably will not materialize. But like I said, let's go ahead and jump into our first takeaway and want to start with a little bit of positivity and that is with the Chicago Bears defense. And even though it wasn't uh, a great day and especially when you look at the Rams got themselves 161 yards rushing on 34 carries for an average of 4.7 yards per carry. Uh, just a really, really rough day. And it was it was especially upsetting, and we'll get to more of this later on, but the Rams were doing it with a lot of those kind of jet sweeps early on, and they they used a lot of different motion for their running game. And and then in the second half, that's where it seemed like more of a power game. You just kind of think, isn't that what the Bears' offense is supposed to look like? But like I said, we'll get into more of that later on. Uh, going back to the defense, so yes, they did give up quite a few yards through the ground, but they also scored a touchdown. Let's keep that in mind. Uh, to Sean Gibson, there was at least one, maybe two opportunities for interceptions that he just couldn't come away with. And one of them was, I thought, kind of bad. He came in ready to, to break up something rather than just take away the football. When you have what the Bears have on offense, you got to try to take advantage of those opportunities when they're presented especially when Jared Goff was pretty solid overall. He was only sacked once. It was by Khalil Mack, but it did feel like the Bears' front was getting pressure. And to the Rams' credit, they did a great job of getting the ball out of Jared Goff's hands quickly. They did a lot of short pass stuff, but they also were able to attack downfield a little bit too. Again, it looked like what the Bears honestly should look like offensively. It's kind of discouraging when you see that, but... On third downs, the Bears gave up four of 13 attempts, so that's pretty good. Uh, They weren't as great in the red zone, gave up, you know, a couple touchdowns down there, and especially on one of the drives where you saw the pile just moving down with Malcolm Brown, the Rams running back. So it wasn't a great, perfect day from the defense. But that being said, this is a defense that once again has kept this team in the game, and you look at what the Bears did offensively, None of it really complements what the defense is doing or to help the defense. And I think without a doubt, attrition really wore down this Bears defense. And part of the reason why they didn't play as well as we normally see them play. When multiple times early on in the game, you go three and out, and you're putting this Bears defense up against a Sean McVay type offense where, you know, you give Sean McVay enough opportunities, he's going to find a way to score some points. And... And I think that's exactly what happened. He had a great game plan, I thought, too, in the red zone. He tried to hurry things up, 
create some confusion, not let this Bears defense really settle in, especially where they've been the best, and that's in the red zone. So a lot of good stuff from the Rams offensively. But the Bears, I thought, matched up well enough and hung in there well enough that they can kind of keep their heads up high. Uh, Certainly, they got to get better. And, you know, losing Eddie Goldman is just such a tough loss for this Bears defense because that run game is really hurting. And they really don't have a guy that they can replace him with within the roster. Probably will have to go elsewhere, like free agency, if they're going to try to maybe get better at their run defense up the middle. Therefore, it's all about this defense continuing to hold the fort, continuing to play as well as they have, because they're going to be tested with this Saints team coming in. They've got to try to find a way to be a little bit better, and maybe this loss kind of quasi works out because they have some things that they can really iron out and fix in terms of communication and getting set faster Uh, especially if teams go to hurry up against them. Maybe that's a benefit for them later on down the season. Okay, so we've kind of, I guess, done our positive for this game. Now let's look at uh, a couple things that I'm sure no Bears fan really wants to go over, but uh, they're important, so we need to go over them. Nick Foles, Matt Nagy, boy, oh boy. Something is really messed up right there between them and this offensive line. They're not really doing anything at all. And partly it's it's Matt Nagy's fault. But you look at the running, 17 carries for the Bears, 49 yards. Uh, just not enough, really bad. And we, we have these glimpses like Cordell Patterson being stopped on fourth and one. They get a false start on Rashad Coward, but they probably don't even get that fourth and one, so that would have been another. Uh, Multiple times in third and short, they were unable to get the yardage that they needed. It just, it was a disaster. And then you look at even the throwing totals, 40 attempts, 28 completed for 261 yards and two interceptions. Nick Foles, uh, I forgot exactly the point. I believe it was when the Rams went up 17-3, the Bears had themselves a terrific drive. I mean, just the hurry-ups working, they're moving down the field, and it it looks tremendous. They get into the red zone, and Nick Foles throws an inexplicable pass to Darnell Mooney, who's not open, completely covered. The corner might be a little bit behind but he's in a great spot and he is actually playing the the route by Mooney pretty well and on top of it he's got another defensive back who makes the interception Taylor Rapp behind him ready to potentially break up anything that gets by him or to throw out the receiver out of bounds before he can get his two feet down it just horrible by Nick Foles. You can't throw that interception and we saw many instances where if Nick could extend the play a little bit, the Bears probably would have been potentially decent. Without that ability to stretch a play, it's hard for Nick Foles to even really read and react and you saw it last night, there was a, a great visual of it. You know, Three guys slide to Aaron Donald So three blitzers off the other side, only have two guys to beat. Nick Foles sees it, throws it immediately, and, you know, it's an errant throw to a wide-open Darnell Mooney who completely goes by Jalen Ramsey. I mean, it might be a touchdown, but how can you fully anticipate that throw when you are immediately throwing it 35 yards downfield and you just have to toss it up before the guy is even in out of his break? I mean, Mooney, if anything, is going into his break when that ball is being released. So that's just an incredibly tough throw for any quarterback, really. It, it's a it's a total mess right now for the Bears offense. You really look at the breakdown of scoring yesterday. Special teams technically got four points when you look at the point after touchdown and the field goal, and the defense got six points on the touchdown. That's all ten. The Bears offense didn't really score anything. They got themselves into a position to kick a field goal. And like I said, the special teams came out for the point after touchdown on the defensive touchdown. It wasn't anything that the offense did. Right now, they are just going out there and trying to tread out the same thing after same thing with slight adjustments and I guess more attention to detail. It's not working. And 
maybe it wouldn't work with anybody else as the play caller. Maybe it wouldn't work with you made some changes along the offensive line or the running back position or maybe even wide receiver. Whatever the case, it would be nice to see some fire, some energy, some accountability. Because right now, they look on the precipice of sliding down into a bad spot. One thing Nagy has to really avoid, what if your players see that the way you're calling games just doesn't make sense with what you're doing and they start losing faith in you as a coach? That is absolutely the worst case scenario for Matt Nagy. And and if you're Matt Nagy, why wouldn't you even consider the thought of letting another person be the play caller and just looking at his offense from a different point of view? You don't even really have to announce it. I guess Maybe there would have to be some announcement. Maybe the Bears have already done it. I, I'm not exactly sure. I highly doubt it because Matt Nagy wants to be the play caller. But take a week or two off of play calling and just see if Bill Lazor, let's say, who has experience play calling, see if he does anything a little bit different or how he would attack it. And maybe you get a little spark of something and you can take it back over. I mean, I highly doubt Bill Lazor takes over and all of a sudden they're the Rams offense of 2018 or, you know, the Kansas City Chiefs of now. It, that's not going to happen. So it's not like you have to worry a guy is just going to completely undermine your offensive play calling ability. But at the same time, too, maybe a different perspective could help this thing. And when you got the Saints and Titans coming into town, I'll tell you right now, both of those defenses are pretty physical. They're coached by pretty good coaches. Something's got to give here. And it's going to be either heads rolling or it's going to be people trying to do some different things and create that energy or at least create some sustainable offense. So our final takeaway is just looking at really the realism of the situation that the Bears are in right now. Offensively, I don't know what what's going to happen, <laughs> honestly, it, It seems like the more tape that comes out, the more people are figuring out what the Bears are doing, and they just have them all dialed up, all calculated. There's no nuance to what the Bears are doing, and the strengths of this team are just completely unknown. I mean, there's nothing that they just do really well. They can do some of the short passing, I guess, but even that, it's just a lot of times you're like, drops are just not executed, poor ball, Poor uh, misread, whatever. Poor blocking. They're not a good screen team. They're not good at running inside the tackles. They're not good at running outside the tackles. Their creativity plays never seem to work. They have no real trick plays or anything that works. Their deep shots are pretty much non-existent. The list just keeps going on and on, and you just wonder... What the heck Matt Nagy's going to do to try to fix this? And if you're Ryan Pace, what are you doing? Like, are you in Matt Nagy's ear? Are you trying to figure out what he's doing? Because this defense is just wasting away right now. Guys are just getting older year by year, and there's not enough talent on the offensive side of the ball where you feel comfortable about their future. They're completely void of playmakers, it seems like. There's some guys like Al Robinson, Darnell Mooney that, you know, impress. But if you don't have a quarterback that can get the ball to the receiver, wide receivers are kind of irrelevant. Dave Montgomery, I, I like him, but I just don't see star. And he's definitely not a guy that's going to break a tackle and take it to the house. They don't have any of that in the running back position. They don't have any of that in the tight end position. Cole Komet, you know, I just I come back to it can – he not do what Demetrius Harris is out there doing? I mean, Demetrius, again, another pretty poor game. Some drops, a penalty, missed blocks. He just – Cole makes a great catch early in that game. You just – I wonder why not ride the hot hand. But apparently, you know, the Bears have a plan and they're sticking to it. Matt Nagy's sticking to his scheme. He's sticking to the play calling. Uh, Ryan Pace, you're seeing the flaws that he – committed this offseason I mean trusting that Mitch Trubisky would develop was a huge mistake again everyone wants to kind of bombard New England with how they mismanage the quarterback position the Bears 
they don't matter as much because they have never had a good quarterback like the Patriots. But you just they're the same way. I mean, you decide to go with Mitch instead of just getting rid of him, and you only bring in one backup, Nick Foles, and he's playing about as good as Mitch. And that's not surprising necessarily because as much as people were potential Nick Foles fans, I think everybody knew Nick Foles is not a starter. He's a backup. No drafting of the quarterback. You look at the same thing with the offensive line. Didn't draft anybody until the seventh round, and those guys aren't even close to being on the football field. You know, Rashad Coward, you saw how poorly he played last year. So far, he's played pretty poorly this year. You know, what are you seeing with him? Alex Bars, the guy that you didn't want to let go to New England, so you sign him to the active roster, but you don't want to really put him in games. You wonder, what what did Ryan Pace see in his roster that he felt so good about offensive line and running back? I mean, he really only added uh, Darnell Mooney, which he had to because they got rid of Taylor Gabriel. They needed a speed guy. And he, he focused in on the tight ends, and the tight ends aren't even really being used that well. So it just... It's a mess, and you just wonder when you have good people in place in your front office and your coaching staff, they find ways out of this mess. You know, the Rams, for example, they looked terrible a week before the Bears on Sunday Night Football against San Francisco. What did they do? They came back out with intensity, toughness, a terrific game plan, and they stuck it to the Bears, and they rebounded off of that terrible loss, even though they still have the same players that probably their collection of talent is third in the NFC West or fourth. A lot of time has been wasted thinking that things are going to turn around like Mitch Trubisky, offensive line, when really all of Chicago knew nothing's really going to change. Maybe some improvement, but we're not talking – one day bad, one day pro bowler. But that's crazy. But I guess to end with just a little bit of positivity, you can't overreact too hard after one loss. They're 5-2. and two, Tough game against the Saints, but if they find a way to win and get to 6-2, and two, I don't think it's going to just change the narrative. No one's going to just praise the offense. But it would be reaffirmation that the Bears are still one of the better teams in the NFC even if they have no offense to speak of. But the NFC, there's no real world beaters there. So a lot can be gained with a victory. And on top of that, too, you've got a Titans team coming in afterwards. All you got to do is find a way to just get a win between the Saints and the Titans, and you're probably okay. You're certainly still on track to make the playoffs. And again, if they can find a way to fix this offense somewhat, and not talking about being good, but having some reliable plays, having some strengths, you know, bottom of the barrel, low bar stuff. But with the weather turns in Chicago, that's going to be an advantage for them in their home games as well. So stay positive Bears fans. I know it's rough right now. Definitely a lot of questions that need to be answered. Winning those five games bought them some time. Time is ticking, but they have bought themselves a little bit of time and might Time might run out at the end of this next Sunday against the Saints if they lose and lose in a disturbing fashion like this Monday night. And it's a shortened week on top of it. But you have some time. Figure out the issues. Hopefully the Bears can do it. We'll see what they're made of.